Morning everyone, Dave Greco here again, and today I wanted to go over how we tackle hair. Uh, I'm trying a bit of a new format here. Uh, a lot of people said they wouldn't mind having like a camera in the bottom corner, so we'll try it out. So if you guys like it, we can keep it here. If not, we can just go straight to the painting itself. But I wanna jump in it pretty quick today. As you can see here, we have a character with no hair. I just did kind of like a uh, quick sketch. It actually probably took me like 30, 40 minutes to uh, draw. I just found some images of girls on Pinterest and kind of cobbled some shapes and uh, poses together. Just to have like a base body to work with when we tackle hair. Uh, I love rendering hair for some reason. A lot of illustrations that I do, for some reason it's like therapeutic and relaxing when I render hair. So I'm just going to go into some quick basic things that I analyze when I go to draw out the hair. I usually start more with like a line drawing and then go from there, but we can see how we go. All right, sorry, it's a little, uh, it's a little early in the morning for me myself. But so I have two um, faces right here. I just uh, copied it over. So we can do uh, two hairstyles and kind of just show you how, what I think about when we first go into it and then where we go after. All right. So I basically have a new layer and let's go up here into my brushes, same brushes uh, I used before. And sometimes I'll go around Pinterest or Google and just try to find like nice hairstyle inspiration, you know, that's always important. So let's see here. So usually a lot of time I like to figure out if I'm going short hair, long hair, and I'm gonna kind of figure out where the hairline is. For this one, I'm gonna have hair that covers the forehead. So it may not be as important to uh, figure out like where the hairline goes, like the top of her head or something, right? All right, let me zoom out a little bit here. And basically, I usually go in kind of with like a like a line drawing. Same pretty loose that I usually do. And I want this one, it's gonna cover part of her ears. Kind of come down here. I like my hair to be flowy and swoopy. Swoopy, that's a word, right? And I kind of just, I want real flowing lines all over the place. And then I'll clean it up and figure out how we want to render it. One thing I gotta make sure with the camera here is that I'm not actually painting behind myself. And always remember that like, say if your head's up here, your hair is gonna have like a little volume above your head, right? It doesn't have to be a ton. I'm basically just getting some kind of silhouette here. One big thing I focus on when I'm doing hair too is I like large blocky shapes, but I don't want to feel like they're hard pieces of plastic at the same time, you know? So as we render, we'll pull out little individual strands. So there's a couple things we go into rendering, like what I usually try to avoid when doing hair as well, you know? We're we'll trying to do this pretty quick here. So we don't have the video too long for everybody. But hopefully everyone's doing great and I'm enjoying the video content so far. You guys have been uh, really, really amazing. Great, great feedback in the comments, all that type of stuff. I had more requests on stream last night for more content we could do. Uh, looks like a lot of people want like a lot of individual stuff too, like how to handle eyes, noses. Um, I have a pretty basic approach to that stuff, but we can certainly do some videos on that. I know there's a lot of great content on YouTube for that stuff, but if people want more of it, I can definitely try. All right, so I have this on its own layer here. I might make a layer underneath it, and then I may paint right underneath it. I hope you give her like light blue hair. We don't have to have like rear, uh, rear, real hair colors for this. So basically under that line drawing I have, we can actually just, I'm basically just kind of color it in for the most part. I want to keep that line drawing on top because I'm actually going to use a lot of those shapes for some information at one point. I'm just going to fade that out a little bit so it doesn't take out too much of her jawbone. 
a lot of this stuff, I like to do it manually. I don't like to lasso and fill. I'd rather just paint it around. Sometimes your brushes can leave like little marks that uh, are interesting to you. It's almost like I'm just trying to fill in those like loose shapes that we did earlier. I'll actually have it go behind here too. There we go. You can hear me jamming on my bracket keys. I'm always changing my brush size as I paint. So I'm staying pretty loose here. And so we at least have like a base, right? From here we can start to pick, uh, pick out little parts and then create some more depth to the hair. So I'm gonna go back to the top one, make another layer. Like all these layers, I just could end up flattening later, uh, later. But for now, I like to have them. We're just gonna go with like a darker version of this blue right here. And I'm gonna use kind of lines to break up these front shapes. Like I don't wanna draw individual hairs. I think you should avoid doing individual hairs. Like when you start, people start doing this kind of thing. I think that's not gonna get you, um, if you're looking for do you do stylized hair, it's probably not gonna get you the result that you're looking for. But I do like to have some bigger shapes. Like you take like these large shapes and then you break them down into smaller ones. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to follow like where her direction of her bangs are going right now. And I create more kind of swoopy lines inside of it to figure it out. I like all my hair lines to be kind of connected to something else, if that makes sense. Like I don't have too many lines where they're just kind of doing nothing floating out there. They are usually closed off lines where they're connected to where this, this hair up here tucks underneath and that type of stuff. And so I'm still trying to create that form around the top of her head, right? And same thing right here. So I have like these larger lines and maybe what we're seeing in this space right here is almost like a little pocket of hair. It could be a little bit darker and then I'll kind of just create some individual shapes and lines inside of here. And real lightly with the brush, maybe I'll just darken it up a little bit. You know, we could dark up a whole bunch of this under her ear. Like we'll have that her ear show right here. I like finding cool little hair shapes too. So we can bring out some of this on top. Grab this lighter color. We can clean up some of the some of the line work from before. Like I can see certain parts of chunky hair that we can bring out. But then we'll go back in and just clean up these shapes. Like all those kind of loose lines we did earlier, giving us like little bits of information on how we may want to tackle it. Let's see here. You can create like little shadows. It's like, you're really thinking about the whole uh, form and dimension of the whole thing. Hope I'm making any type of sense. Hope so. Like I was talking to someone the other day and I, this has been great for me to start to try to communicate how I work to people. Uh, it's something I've never actually done much before in my life, so I'm still very new on communicating my process and how I work. I never even thought anyone would be interested in seeing how I work, so this has been very cool. All right, same kind of thing. You can kind of just roam around the piece, um, clean up little parts. We're not gonna go super, super tight rendered on this, but we can get it enough. Where I show you guys. I'm thinking, I'm just making another layer just for, you know, I make a lot of layers. I end up squashing the layers later, but I do make a ton of them. And so I think about the front part of her bangs here, right? When you start adding highlights on it, it's like you're giving dimension and pushing the piece outward. So I know at one point, that's kind of like a generic lighting scheme that, you know, I want kind of like this whole highlight area to be kind of around here. It'll push the front part out a little bit forward. So let me just, we'll darken down this uh, bottom part right here. Just so we have like a more larger range of values when we get to the uh, highlights. 
and we'll do the same thing at the top. So you can kind of see that what we were going for. We just haven't hit a lot of the highlights and stuff yet. And doing this stuff is uh, pretty easy too. So like you have like these larger slices of hair and you can always go crazy. You can, you can add more of them. You can add more swoopy ones to come down, little strands. You know, we don't want to cover too much of our face so you don't have to add those ones. We could also go up and clean up some of these bangs. We could give them more of a uh, hard edge if you want. Just using that kind of looseness we had before, you kind of just slice out what you like, if that makes sense. There we go. I want to be a little careful with how I'm slicing it, but. All right, same thing around these edges too. So like, I like having these little pieces of hair that kind of come off off the sides. Just like that. There we go. More little cuts inside of it. I still stay pretty zoomed out. I don't get like crazy zoomed in when working on these. I mean, maybe at one point I will. But I want, I'm just trying to clean up a little bit. I don't want a lot of these kind of brown lines that are coming off. Some of it's kind of nice, but we don't need, we don't need all of it. All right. So basically, let's make another layer. I think we could go with an overlay layer. Just want to do like a soft airbrush. And instead of just going straight white on top of our hair, let's add a little bit of a little more different color here. Just a variation. And let's start to pepper in this line of light and color that we might want to do on the piece. All right, so we can get some of it up here, maybe a little bit down here into this. And then we can also, on a new layer that's just a normal layer, want to go pretty far with some of our highlights here. So right now it's super airbrushing and it kind of erases some of the other work we did. So I want to take it back and erase into those highlights to kind of get some more hair shapes back into it. So we could do, sometimes you can either take an eraser tool. Uh, sometimes I'll just go right back over my little cuts that I made. We'll do that to start. And sometimes you can actually introduce a couple new ones real lightly. And so we're just doing these like little slices. And as you've seen in uh, other pieces, I like to create kind of shapes within shapes. And so I'll do the same thing with hair, right? I'm kind of taking these little slices out. I figured it just gives it a little bit more interest right here. Instead of just a total kind of bulbous airbrush shape that goes across the top. All right, <laughs> oh, it's layer time. Let's go back to my main brush here. I can just kind of color pick one of these highlights right here. And we can go around the piece a little bit more. It's like, oh, maybe we'll throw a little bit of this highlight down here. I still wanna cut out the shape around it. Always feels pretty good. Same thing over here. I'm not like super concerned with a lot of like my light sources are and all that stuff right now, especially not for something like this. You can just give hair kind of a, a life of its own. I'm still going around, you can still keep cleaning up. See what works. That's what's nice about working on hair. It's almost like you're working on some type of abstract art. You, you could kind of just lose yourself in it a little bit. And I'm just rendering little areas. What 
but these little areas feel good. Uh, we can actually get darker on some of these, especially ones that fall behind different parts of the ear and back here. We could really keep going back and forth and seeing how much depth and detail we want to give the entire ear. Like I think this was actually a piece of hair right here. Like around the face. It's interesting. Sometimes I go back and forth. You can leave a lot of the line drawing if you want, or you can totally paint over all of it. I like a good mix, you know. There we go. And at the same time, I do like to have like a, you can add like a couple little loose hairs up here, you know? Uh, we're not gonna like backlight this hair or anything. Which could make us incorporate some different colors and different way we tackle it. This is basically how I go about it. And then you keep pushing, you can push the darks more, you can add more and more highlight. Especially, it is nice sometimes when you have um, some pretty crisp highlights up in the bangs or top of the hair. Actually, usually feels pretty good. It's like a nice sheen. There you go. You could really could pepper that around, like you could try putting a little bit on these pieces. Sometimes you can figure out more of these folds, grab some of these little lighter colors and bounce it around. There you go. We will add a little bit more to this one so it bounces her hair out a little bit. And I could even, if I go to another overlay layer, I kind of want to give like a little more of color that bounces underneath it. It's almost like you're adding like bounce light to hair, which uh, sometimes is a little crazy, but let's try to add, let's try it. Let's see what happens. I I'm thinking more of like these undersides you see um, be cool to give it like another breath of color underneath here. Just, I'm barely brushing this on. Sometimes, sometimes you just look at a piece and like maybe a little bit more of this color underneath here might just make it pop a little bit more. You can always just experiment with this stuff and if it's too much or if it's not working, you can always just pop it off. Easy peasy. There's a little bit. You could even get crazier and like really gradient the hair if you want. So we, you know how I like my purples, my violets. We can get a little bit more down here. Just settling, peeking through. Do something like that. Cause then once you start identifying some cool color in there that you see, like, oh yeah, yeah, I like that color. Maybe you can color pick some of it see what it is in here. I was like, oh yeah, I like that. Let's push it a little bit further, just a tiny bit. And then you can just start laying that color right on top, cut out some shapes again. Get these cool blues and purples down here. And you're really just using a lot of the pre-established shapes that we used before. Whew, sun's coming through the back here. <laughs> Sorry, I get so backlit while doing these. Once the light starts blasting in, I was trying to get this started pretty early before uh, a lot of light in the room. Actually makes it a little bit harder to see this antique during the day, how I have it set up. But there we go. I think that is a good, decent way to start it. Sorry for that noise in the background. My cats are crazy. See how much we want to do. But see, already, I feel like I could just totally get lost in this thing. Let's just paint this, these hairs for the next couple hours, and I'd be pretty happy. 
I like inter finding interesting hair shapes and it's strange, but it's true. All right, I think that's pretty good for our first example. Uh, we'll do a lot of the same on the second one, but at least we can at least show a different hairstyle one with maybe doesn't have as many bangs covering the top of the head, stuff like that. And then, but even on this piece right away, you could kind of go back into the face since we kind of had that face painted beforehand where most of the time I would probably paint this at the same time. You could kind of figure out like more like highlights so it blends better into the hair here and that type of stuff. So it doesn't feel <laughs> so much like she's got like a, a wig on or something. All right, let me uh, take a second here and let's hop over to the uh, second hair one. All right, so we're back with the uh, second hairstyle here. And let me start throwing in some shapes. Uh, I want this one to be more kind of like a swooped over uh, hairstyle. Uh, maybe with, we could possibly do like a shaved uh, side of her head over here. But let me just start here by kind of figure out how we may want this to go. Like usual, I'm staying pretty loose with how I want it to be. Keep my hand loose. I want a lot of this to feel like it kind of flows backwards and then uh, then we can figure out her hairline back here and how that might go. I think we can keep this pretty tight on this side. I'm gonna change my brush size still quite a bit and how we want to swoop this around. Like we could actually keep this pretty long on this on this side, which might be pretty interesting. That stri straight line might not be what we're going for. But I even think about like the around the edge of her head to keep enough uh, interest. Like on the top, like instead of just having it be perfectly around. I want to still break it up in these like large clumpy shapes and then we'll break down those shapes even further in. Like we're not going to go all the way to rendering out the entire bottom of her hair, so I'm not super, super concerned. I know at one point I want this part to have like that kind of, it swoops over and then there's the shadow underneath. It'll be uh, a little more interesting. I, th I think we'll bring it actually a little bit more down. I want more over her face on this side. All right, so let's go into basically what we did before is we want to kind of paint underneath it. Definitely go with more of a red head on this one. So same deal, I'll take some color and start blocking underneath this line drawing. Start pretty dark, because then it'll be easier to go uh, more mid-tones and highlights later. And we can actually use this to fill out uh, some more of her hair too. If like if it's not thick enough and you want a little bit more over here, you can still do it at this stage. Same deal, I just slowly peppering that around. And same kind of deal, I like having like little bits that kind of like flick out and fan out about her hair. Maybe some comes down around her neck a little bit. This is one of those situations too where we're actually gonna have, we lit her kind of a strange way when we did the face where it's lit on that side, but then we have hair on that side. So she wouldn't be getting so much light on the side of her face. So that's something we can, uh, we can darken up as well. I wonder if we just do like a quick, a little way to do it. You just start to get like a little more. Underneath, just to give it a little more weight here. This may be too desaturated, too much of a gray, but. I can kind of just pencil it in a little bit. Maybe I'll take some of that red. Then at the same time, maybe um, we can clean this up over. All right, so really the same deal as before. I'm gonna go over the top of this thing, clean up some of these big shapes. And then I wanna find the parts of the hair that are super interesting. We're gonna zoom in so we're not working so far away. 
And then we can really start, we start here and I wanna start bringing more oranges and yellows into the hair. So I can just go up a little bit, grab a little bit more orange. And then we start getting this on, we'll have that kind of deeper red hanging out underneath it. I know I want these swooping shapes come over the side and those are gonna catch like the biggest highlights. Same with like right under the shadow here. Maybe this part is one of them. It's like we're just finding all these little individual shapes down underneath it all. Let's see what works. And go back and cut in. Clean up this bottom. Same deal here. And you can take out these other parts, so like maybe some like little, that's why I like to stay messy at first, because I think there's a lot of like loose lines that you get can create some interesting shapes for you. Same deal, I'm just cutting out these little parts. Like if I don't want it to seem so thick of one area, I can just break it down into smaller parts right here. Same thing up here. I can find like little shapes that look nice. Like I said, this is why it's easier for me to get lost in it. It's like, I don't have to worry about like, oh, I'm rendering a finger. I gotta make sure this finger looks like it's connecting this bone. I feel like when you are rendering and stylizing hair, you can really just get really loose with it and you don't have to worry about a ton. I think you can do hair in so many different ways and it still looks good. I wanna bring, I wanna lighten up and not have it so hard edge where it's hitting her uh, hair back here. Especially if it's pulled back. Um, it's good to kind of like fade it in a little bit. Since you have kind of like, you know, where your hairs are connecting um, to your forehead and scalp and all that stuff. It's not gonna be such a, it's not gonna be like a dramatic line, right? There we go. We'll clean up some more lines, figure out some more shapes. It's like figuring out different areas where hair overlaps with each other, right? We can do this, this kind of deal all day. You know, maybe we'll leave this bottom part a little loose. Right now, I kind of see like on this down here, I don't like how it's all kind of fanning out the same direction. Maybe we could just grab some parts and who knows sometimes I try to like bend the hair back in you can create some negative space of areas you don't want their hair, their hair to start feeling like tentacles or something I mean unless there's a, like a tentacle hair creature then of course you do but still just always finding these little interesting areas Then I'll go in, I might actually like darken out, darken some little areas here. And so we kind of have all these little areas that we've knocked out. All right. So I think if you go too thick in some areas, like it almost looks like she could have some type of like dreadlocks or something. And I'm, it's not really the look we're going for on this one. So sometimes it's worth kind of brushing out if there's too many thick shapes. But it's so easy to just kind of knock it out, make a couple new ones, see how that works. I do like to use overlay layers when I'm like applying color to my hair. I feel like light coming, coming through it and giving it that kind of vibrancy is uh, pretty important to me. So I want to get a little, definitely a little more saturated color in here, pressing real light on it. Just kind of cherry picking some areas. Then we can go a little bit up here. figure out this stuff like this. I'm also noticing while I'm doing this at the bottom that it's almost feeling like, I want it to feel like more 
volume to her hair. The one we're not showing all of it. I figured her hair is actually going down pretty far. But let's at least make maybe we can make it seem like it just kind of comes to a good place at the bottom of this piece where it still seems like it kind of goes off and there's a lot more hair to show. So I'm probably drawing using like half my screen here. Trying to remember to kind of drag the piece over a little bit more so it's a little easier to see. Same thing, cutting in colors like I usually do. Same deal. We're cleaning up all this. Bring in some of that color back here. So it's almost like you see these little shapes that we've made and I can just render inside all these little shapes. Just keep cleaning it up. Especially down here, I like it uh, right underneath the shadow. So you kind of have like this area, it's a nice focal point going from dark right into your light. And you're gonna get uh, some nice contrast right there that's gonna pull the viewer's eye in. And that's always gonna be nice. All right, same deal. Let's uh, let's bring some even more highlights into it. I want to go and bring a little bit more yellow. Let's see what a little bit more yellow does to it. I think the variance in color is uh, super important, so it's just not one shade of red, and that's just what we bring into the whole piece. There we go. Kind of bring that same thing. It's almost got that kind of like fiery look, right? And when you go from reds to yellows, that's what you need. The same deal. If we did the same, did this whole piece at once, like we probably should, you know, you normally would. We can bring a little more red into her eyebrows, that type of stuff. Um, and, you know, we'll give her a couple more freckles too. The same deal. I noticed that, like, when we kind of did this darker area on her face. Maybe we would actually get more of the red from her hair, creating like a bounce light on her instead. There's a little bit more red in there. But this is pretty much it guys. This is really my process on how I do hair. And then there's other um, things we do like, I do like to like add like a light source behind the hair so you have some color coming through. And we can try that sometimes. Sometimes what's easy to do that is when I do start with my overlay. And it seems like you use a lot of overlays, but you do have to be careful with them because you can oversaturate your piece quite a bit. So I try to just like add like this tint of extra color and then take that and paint on top of it. So if there was hair like light coming from behind down here, so when you do something like this, right, you can kind of picture if light was coming through and that saturation that would give it. And you could basically say if I erase out from behind it and we leave some of this uh, saturated color, I could go back in, erase parts of it. So it's just, uh, at least on these insides, it's just kind of poking through. We'll do some of these cuts so we still have some nice uh, desaturated color in here. But then even myself, I'll go in Let's grab that main brush again, which the link uh, will be provided to you guys down in the description below for this. I can grab these really crazy colors and start cutting them in myself, you know. And then we just take that further and further and further as we go. You're still cutting into these shapes. And same deal, especially like these ones that really are on the outside. Look how saturated we are right now, which is actually kind of nice. You know, you'll see a lot of these little fine hairs that may be coming off that are really picking up light on the outside. Same deal, that's always something to try and you're still doing the same type of shapes. You're just kind of like adding color and adding color and where we want those highlights and those really saturated pieces to come off of. 
But I'll just leave that down there. It's just kind of used as an example. That same thing up here. I think I like to go um, a little bit more with my highlights. I like a good glint sometimes in hair. If you haven't seen any of my previous work on kind of the attention I spent on hair, maybe I'll try to show a couple examples in this video, maybe right here, of how I do like to tackle hair. And you can kind of see the same process in all the hair that I've done in these examples. All right. So I think that's a pretty good little showcase today of how we kind of tackle different hairs and you can, let's see here, let me close these, all right. Yeah, you know, how we may start to tackle hair on a character. I think even on this right one, I see that like, it seems a little flat on the side, we could add more volume and I'm always obsessed with the silhouette and shape of it. So we can kind of keep going through. And it's so easy too. like you can grab pieces and like extend that out. We could, you could do so much cool stuff with hair. That just always feels good. I feel like you can create a lot of like life and energy to your piece. You know, I'm just gonna run your hair for a little bit. But that'd be a bit, that'd be about it. But thank you so much everybody for checking out uh, this video as well. Uh, hopefully this gives you a little glimpse and definitely same as last video, try to tackle one of your characters and take this approach to hair. Uh, maybe it's just a little bit different than how you're used to doing it. So everybody, thank you so much. Uh, please comment down below if anything else you want me to see. Uh, I think next week we may have a, uh, a time-lapse piece, but I'm doing a time-lapse piece with a bunch of commentary beforehand that kind of shows my thought process before we get into it. And uh, thank you for all the subscribers. And if you're uh, looking forward to more content for the channel, please subscribe. It means everything to me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.